Hello, this is Joe McGee. Welcome to our podcast. Make sure that you subscribe and please share the podcast with your friends. That is the number one way you can help us reach people with God's love and healing. We love you guys. Hope you enjoy the podcast. Hey guys, welcome to Through the Bible with Joe McGee. We're going from Genesis to Revelation, one book at a time, and we're actually doing it in chronological order in order that it happened. And it's fascinating because the Bible's written from the largest book to the shortest book. Genesis covers some 2,500 years. That's why it's the first book. And then it goes all the way down to the, get down into the book of Jude, which is the shortest book. And then you got Revelation, which is a summation of all the things that God did. And so we're taking it in chronological order, which is really fascinating. So today we're picking up in Leviticus chapter 17. Now Leviticus chapter 17 um, is what you can and cannot eat, prohibition about eating certain things, and then forbidden sexual practices. So God's getting very real about their daily living. What you put in your mouth, what you do with your spouse. There's certain things you're allowed and not allowed. So let me jump in. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. I really like this translation. Proverbs, uh, I'm sorry, Leviticus 17, verse 1. Then the Lord said to Moses, give the following instructions to Aaron and his sons and to all the people of Israel. This is what the Lord has commanded. If any native Israelite sacrifices a bull, or a lamb, or a goat, anywhere inside or outside the camp, instead of bringing it to the entrance of the tabernacle, to present it as an offering to the Lord, that person will be as guilty as a murderer. God's very strict, very detailed. There is no wishy-washy with God. Such a person has shed blood and will be cut off from the community. The purpose of this rule is to stop the Israelites from sacrificing animals in the open fields. It will ensure that they bring their sacrifices to the priest at the entrance of the tabernacle so he can present them to the Lord as a peace offering. Then the priest will be able to splatter the blood against the Lord's altar at the entrance of the tabernacle. He will burn the fat as a pleasing aroma to the Lord. The people must no longer be unfaithful to the Lord by offering sacrifices to the to the goat idols. Now we can go into some great detail. They had... They had all kinds of sacrifices and false gods and statues cut out of wood and stone. Uh, the heathens, the Israel had picked up the practice of the heathens, and they're worse than crazy stuff. And God's trying to get them to stop it. This is a permanent law for them to be observed from generation to generation. Verse 8, give them this command as well. If any native Israelite or foreigner living among you offers a burnt offering or a sacrifice, but does not bring it to the entrance of the tabernacle to offer it to the Lord, that person will be cut off from the community. You're not going to fellowship. You're not going to go to dinner with them. You're not going to invite them over to the house. We're going to isolate them. Why? We're trying to get their attention. They can't do this. If any native Israelite or foreigner living among you drinks, uh, eats or drinks blood in any form, it will turn. I will turn against that person and cut him off from the community of your people for the life of the body, it's in the blood. I've given you blood on the altar to purify you, making you right with the Lord. If the blood given in exchange for life makes purification possible, that is why I have said to the people of Israel, you must never eat or drink blood, neither neither must you, neither you nor the foreigners living among you. So you can't go drinking blood. I, people, well, were they doing it? Believe it or not, believe it or not, there were some gross things that went on. Verse 13, if any native Israelite or foreigner living among you goes uh, hunting or kills an animal or a bird that is uh, that is approved for eating, he must drain its blood and, uh, and cover it with earth. The life of every creature is in its blood. That is why I have said to the people of Israel, you must never eat or drink blood, for the life of any creature is in its blood. So whoever consumes blood will be cut off from the community. And if any native-born Israelite or foreigner eats the meat of an animal that died naturally or was torn up by wild animals, they must wash their clothes, bathe themselves in water, for they will remain ceremonially unclean until the evening, but then they will be clean. But if they do not wash their clothes and bathe themselves, they'll be punished for their sin. Now, I remember when I was taking my seniors through this class, it was just so overwhelming the detail that God had. 
don't do this, do this. You can do this, but you can't do that. Eat that, but you can't eat that. And it was like, God's trying to say, sin has death attached to it. You can't accidentally sin. You got to sin on purpose. And that's why um, for years, Israel didn't know they were sinning. So we have the Ten Commandments. They made a movie about it. Now, there are more than Ten Commandments. There's 613 laws, but God started with ten. And he got the Ten Commandments. God's trying to let them know what makes me happy, what makes me mad, what makes me angry, what will draw me close, what will push me away. Sin, I will not be where sin's at. Sin and I cannot dwell in the same place. So God had to tell them what it was. So he started off with the Ten Commandments. Now, I, I say this so many times, it sort of gets old. There's never been a human born that has a sin. He said one, Jesus. That's why we had the virgin birth. The virgin birth, Jesus, the son of God came to Jesus never sinned. He was the only one that never sinned. That's why he could go to the cross and die for my sin. I'd sin for my mother. I went astray from my mother's womb, the Bible says. First word I learned was no, you know, I'm in rebellion. And so it's like, it's a sin nature. I don't want to do what's right. The sin nature, I want to drive as fast as I can drive, do what I want, when I want, with whoever I want. God says, no, you can't do that. There are rules for living on this planet. There's rules to do where you can do things and you can't do other things. So uh, it says they'll be punished for their sin. So that was all the prohibitions about the blood. You can't drink it, you can't eat it, don't consume it. Uh, you got that, you had to bury it. Very detailed. But tied to that, real close is chapter 18, forbidden sexual practices. You know, it's like, God care about sex? Sure. Basically, God said, Proverbs 5, 6, and 7, do it, do it well, and do it often with your spouse, not with nobody else. So it says there in chapter 18, verse 1, then the Lord said to Moses, give the following instructions to the people of Israel. I am the Lord, your God. So do not act like the people of Egypt where you used to live or like the people of Canaan where I'm taking you. You must not imitate their way of life. You must obey all my regulations and be careful to obey my decrees for I am the Lord, your God. If you obey my decrees and my regulations, you'll find life through them for I am the Lord. You must never have sexual relations with a close relative. For I am the Lord. Do not violate your father by having sexual relations with your mother. She is your mother. You must not have sexual relations with her. Do not have sexual relations with any of your father's wives. This would violate your father. Do not have sexual relations with your sister or half sister, whether she is your father's daughter or your mother's daughter, whether she was born in your household or someone else's. Do not have sexual relations with your granddaughter, whether she's your son's daughter or your daughter's daughter. Well, this would violate yourself. Do not have sexual relationships with your stepsister or the daughter of any of your father's wives, for she is your sister. Do not have sexual relationships with your father's sister, for she's your father's closest relative. Do not have sexual relationships with your mother's sister, for she's your mother's close relative. Do not violate your uncle or your father's brother by having sexual relationship with his wife, for she is your aunt. Do not have sexual relationships with your daughter-in-law, for she is your son's wife. So you must not have sexual relations with her. Do not have sexual relations with your brother's wife. That would violate your brother. Do not have sexual relations with both a woman and a daughter. Do not take her granddaughter, whether her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter, or have sexual relations with her. They are close relatives. This would be a wicked act. While your wife is living, do not marry her sister and have sexual relations with her. They would be rivals. Do not have sexual relations with a woman during her period or menstrual cycle. Do not defy yourself by having intercourse with your neighbor's wife. Do not permit any of your children to be offered a sacrifice to Molech. You must not bring shame to the name of God, for I am the Lord. Do not practice homosexuality, having sex with another man or with another woman. It is detestable sin. If a man, a man must not defile himself by having sex with an animal. A woman must not offer herself uh, to a male animal or intercourse with it. This is a perverse act. Do not defy yourself in any of these ways, for I am driving out before you those that have defiled themselves in these ways because the entire land has become defiled. I am punishing the people who live there. I will cause the land to vomit them out. They must obey all my decrees and regulations. They must not commit any of these detestable sins. This applies both the native born Israelites and foreigners living among you. All these are detestable activities. 
and they're practiced by the people of the land where I'm taking you. This is how the land has become defiled. So do not defile the land and give it a reason to vomit you out, and it will vomit out the people who live there now. Whoever commits any of these detestable sins will be cut off from the community of Israel. So obey my instructions. Do not defile yourselves by committing any of these detestable practices that are committed by the people who lived in the land before you, for I am the Lord your God. Now, that's a lot of words, but God's very detailed. And any, and I read it really quickly, but you can read it on your own and your own pace, Leviticus 18. God said, I give you a spouse to have sex with. Enjoy yourself. Have a good time. Be ravished with one another, says the Proverbs 5, but not somebody else. It's a relative, not somebody else. No, there are rules. God gave you a spouse to have sex with. Enjoy yourself. Have a great time. Swing from the chandelier and sing soprano. But there are certain rules. You cannot have sex with somebody that's not your spouse. And I, as crazy as it sounds, today's world, you were seeing stuff on the news every day that's just perverse and crazy and insane. They're trying to pass laws that allow certain descents. We can't, we can't allow that. We got to vote and put good people in office and maintain our righteousness in this community, in our nation. I just wanted to pray for those authority that we might live a quiet and peaceful life in all godless and honesty. So, people say, why don't you read all that stuff? Well, because I need to know what God likes and doesn't like. God says, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, be married, have children, have a ton of kids, bless your kids, bless your grandkids. But in the process of all this, God said, Proverbs 5, 6, 7, have a spouse. Be ravished one another. Be satisfied with the breasts of the wife you're you. God made all the things to go with sex. He made it all to be enjoyed. But there are rules to it. And you can't violate the rules because that gets really bad when you do that. So what God made is good, but the devil's trying to mess it up, perverse it ever since day one. From day one, he's trying to mess it up. So let's read the book. Do what the book says. Enjoy a very fun, blessed life. God wants us to be happy in our life, happy in our marriage, happy with our family, thrilled with what we're doing. And he gave us instructions on how to do that. But don't do what he said don't do. That would not be good. So thanks for listening today. Tune in next time. We're going to pick this up some more. It's going to be really good. God bless, guys. Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God can do in your life. He's got a great future for you and your family. We're here to help you get there. Please make sure you visit Joe McGee Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. There you find all of our Friday funny videos and other encouraging resources for you and your family. While you're at it, be sure to visit JoeMcGee.com. We have all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.